Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Dennis with Synaptic Advisory Partners, and today we're going to take some time to go through a video of uh, how you could use Eureka to basically collect customer satisfaction information uh, from your customers. What we're going to do is actually send an email out, have folks fill out a Eureka form uh, about their experience with our organization, uh, whether or not they're satisfied with our service, and then all that information that we collect from them is gonna be stored back inside of Salesforce so that we can manage other business processes that might be dependent on this customer satisfaction data. Um, so let's get right into it. For those of you that uh, are unfamiliar with Eureka, uh, just a quick 30 second overview here is, you're, we're a Salesforce native forms application, which means that you can find us right on the Salesforce app exchange Basically, if you think about it, anytime folks are filling out forms, entering information, assessments, inspections, surveys, audits, uh, you name it, anytime someone needs to fill out a form to put information back into Salesforce, that's what Eureka was designed to do. Uh, we work really well with mobile use cases with our mobile application, but in today's uh, use case, we're gonna talk about kind of the more desktop application uh, where we're collecting information from our customers. Um, we, serve it, or we service three different types of users, is kind of how I like to think of it, both internal users, which means the folks that are working inside of your internal Salesforce org. Uh, we also service communities users, so if you, need, if you have communities users that need to be filling out forms uh, from, their, from their community, we can present forms to them that way. Or in this case, from today's video, we're gonna be talking about external users. So the people that have no access at all to your Salesforce environment, but that you still wanna collect some information from and have that data map back to your org. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. So the, the flow of information that we're gonna kinda of go through is, first of all, we're gonna design a form inside of Salesforce using Eureka's um, uh, form template builder. And we're basically gonna kinda of drag and drop questions onto the canvas and design our customer satisfaction survey. After that, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to just outline the way that I'm using Salesforce automation to make this thing work. So um, we're gonna be uh, using email templates to kind of send out these surveys to people and collect that information. Uh, we're gonna actually send the survey to somebody. In this case, it's gonna be my personal email address. We're gonna fill out the form and then we're gonna come back to Salesforce and view that data and kind of see how things shake out. So with that said, I'm gonna head on over to my Salesforce environment and uh, immediately we're presented with some information about what Eureka looks like inside of our environment. So I just created an org right here uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. And what we'll notice is that there's actually some very basic things across the top here. There's nothing fancy about this. It's your standard accounts, contacts, opportunities, whatever those objects are at the top of, for your tabs. Uh, we've got those here. And then we also have a couple of special objects. For those of you that are not familiar with Eureka, when you install our package, you uh, receive a couple of new objects, both forms, form templates, and uh, several others. But for the sake of this demonstration, we're gonna, just gonna talk about those two. Um, and then we got some reports and dashboards, and we'll all go through some of the reports that I've built for the purposes of this demonstration. But the very first thing we're gonna wanna do here is actually just open up our form template editor. And so when we do that, we're presented with this screen where we can actually just build our first form template. And so it's very easy to do, there's no code involved. You basically just drag sections on here, and we'll just call this general information, for example. And here we can sort of just say, drag questions onto the canvas. And this is how we can really design the form template as we want users to be able to see it. There's all sorts of different question types. Um, we can either have the questions just purely right here on the form or we can link to objects in the system and link to the fields on those objects. Uh, it totally depends on the type of information that you wanna collect. But the point is, is that when we're done, it's going to look something uh, that's much more full where we have first name, last name, and a bunch of questions uh, and information uh, specific about uh, to customer satisfaction use cases. Here's an example of one that I have already completed. So this is a completed form, uh, one that, that looks like uh, one that we might build. So I've got the first and last name of the person that we're gonna send it to, and then just some simple questions like how satisfied were you, were you with our service, um, which is a pick list. We've got uh, kind of a numeric scale here, we call this a net promoter score, uh, if you will. And then we also are using Eureka's conditional display logic, which you'll see when I fill out the form. But if anybody says that it's a neutral or dissatisfied response here, we're actually gonna offer them the ability to tell us what we could have done better. 
So this is us kind of building our form and we're ready to rock and roll. Um, so now let's actually send a blank form to one of our contacts in our system and we'll have that person fill it out. So the first thing I'll do is just show you an example of a contact record. This person named Jake, uh, we're gonna send Jake a, an email where he's gonna fill out that form and then we're gonna map that data back to his contact record where we can report on it or create other automation. Whatever we wanna do for this business process, we can set up, but we're gonna send a form to Jake. Um, the important thing to notice here is there are so many different ways that we could accomplish this. We could do this with um, Pardot, for example. If you have Pardot connecting to Salesforce, we could design this solution around the fact that you're integrating with, with Pardot. Uh, we could also make it uh, work with, third with other third-party uh, marketing automation tools that are off-platform uh, if need be. Uh, in this case, I'm just taking the simple route where we're using Salesforce native email alerts. Um, and email templates. So like I said, there's many different ways that you wanna accomplish it, but that's the way that I've chosen to show you today. And then you can take the information I'm presenting you and apply it elsewhere. Um, most specifically, I'm gonna use Flow to actually send an email template. If you're not familiar with Flow, don't get overwhelmed. I'm not gonna talk about it for very long, but for those of you that are kind of have, have a Salesforce administrator background, you're gonna be familiar with how this works. Um, this is basically the automation that I'm going through to, to demonstrate how this works to you. So you could have this working off of a process builder, a workflow, or in this case, an actual flow where I have a manual action up on the contact record that I'm gonna click uh, and that is gonna send the email. We're gonna use Salesforce email alerts and email templates to facilitate actually sending this message. Um, and then in that email template, we actually have a link to this form that, that I showed you uh, where someone can actually fill it out and technically speaking, it's hosted on Salesforce public sites. Um, so if we go back to my Salesforce environment here, what you'll see is I'll actually just click this button and this is my flow kicking off and it just says, you know, click finish or click next, I guess, uh, to send the email. And that's it, we're done. Um, so uh, Salesforce has done its magic, the automation fired off the email alert and we're on our way. Um, technically speaking, if you want to see the email template that I built out, this it's just very simple. Nothing, I didn't make it super, uh, super fancy. Uh, just very simple. Please take our survey is the message that someone's going to see, as well as a special link that I've put together that very easily allows us to create a new form record in Salesforce that is tied to that specific contact. I will put information in the YouTube description as to how to build uh, these these links because this is a really important part of it and I'm not going to dig into it right now but the point here is that this is actually going to use merge fields from that contact record and it's going to build a new form for us as the email fires off as the person clicks uh, right into right into the uh, the link in the email okay so uh, let's go ahead and check my inbox and see looks like we just got the email right now so you can see I've been testing all day today. So here's the latest one uh, that we got zero minutes ago. Here, hello, please take our survey. Uh, and then this is the fancy link that I've placed in there. Obviously, if you're designing this for your customers, you're gonna put this link behind a fancier button. You're gonna design the email so that it's a little bit more beautiful, but I actually wanted to see, I wanted to show you what the, the link looks like so you, it kind of builds context around how this thing goes. So I'm the customer now, I'm Jake and I'm gonna click on this link and immediately it's gonna take me to that Salesforce public site where Eureka's public form is hosted. And actually because of that merge field technology that we used in that email template, we're actually linking to Jake's record right here. So it's gonna pre-populate any information that we told it to from the contact record. Um, and so in this case, we've got the first and last name for Jake. If he wanted to change it, he could. Um, we could lock these fields if it was most important, but. I guess my, the, what I'm trying to get at here is if you have other fields on your contact record that you'd like for your contacts themselves to fill out, whether they know it or not, uh, these fields could pre-populate from those or they could be blank and then now after I fill out this form, uh, those changes will be made back to Jake's contact record. So let's just say I'm actually gonna change Jake's last name to Smith um, and we'll make it so obvious when we go back to Salesforce. And then Jake, we're really just looking for Jake to be able to um, to tell us a little bit about his customer experience. So like maybe he was very satisfied or maybe he's dissatisfied. We got a little bit of a pick list here uh, as well as our conditional display logic that's gonna allow us to kind of bend the form around the questions that, uh, the answers that he's giving us. So in this case, we've got a dissatisfied Jake 
And uh, with that said, we're gonna just go ahead and uh, indicate that we also have a one out of 10 for that net promoter. What could we have done better? Uh, my order was messed up. All right, so um, we've got that and we're just gonna submit it and we're done. Okay, so we're gonna click submit. Uh, we could have that re, um, we could have that, sorry, I'm all lost here. We could have that re redirect back to your own website or we could go have it go anywhere we want to. Uh, but the point here is, is that when we actually refresh um, Jake's contact record, what's gonna happen is we're actually gonna see those changes have been made. So we have the, the last name has been updated. Any of the fields that we wanted to have linked to uh, could have been updated as well. And we've got some new records here that have just been created as a result of Jake filling out that form. So. Um, the updates to the records uh, that we told it to have been made and then we also can look at the specific form inside of Salesforce that Jake filled out. Um, the other thing that's important to notice is that we can create insights and I'm going to go into this a little bit deeper here in a moment but we can create insight cards up here uh, very easily from the template builder to have Eureka kind of analyze the, the uh, responses to the questions and create what we call discovery records um, here inside of Salesforce uh, for us to create additional automation off of uh, when we return back to the system. So in this case, we said, you know, how satisfied are you with the service you received? He was very dissatisfied. So uh, we have a discovery that I'll show you here in a moment. And then we have the full form that Jake filled out right here in Salesforce. Anybody uh, with a Eureka license can go ahead and look at this information um, and report on it or otherwise. So we've got Jake's customer satisfaction survey. I'm gonna go back to his contact record. We also have this fancy thing down here called discoveries and that's the insight card that I just showed you on the form record itself. But the discovery was actually created because Jake said that he was dissatisfied. And like I said, these discoveries are really great because you can create other system automation uh, as a result of them being generated by Eureka. So in this case, maybe we said Jake's a dissatisfied customer, therefore a discovery record has been created. And then you can use process builder workflow, um, an apex trigger to do other things in Salesforce as a result of this having ha had happened. So this is a very simple example, but you can imagine if your form is 50 questions long or 20 questions long and you have a bit more complex uh, discoveries that you wanna build out, it's all very easy to set up and you can create some very powerful automation as a result, okay? The last thing that I wanna show you is how do we basically aggregate all this information together? And the answer is we can use Salesforce native reports and dashboards to make this happen. So an example of a dashboard that's aggregating all this information could be right here. So we'll quickly refresh and there's a, an additional response that just came in. But because all of these forms and questions and answers, these are all objects that we put into your system for you uh, along with Eureka's um, proprietary technology. So you can actually run Salesforce reports uh, and put them in dashboards based on the answers to these questions. So we're taking those pick lists from the Eureka form and we can uh, break down how satisfied or unsatisfied folks are. We can indicate how many tens, nines, eights came on that, um, on that customer satisfaction score. And we can e even also report really deeply into the, the uh, free text that was filled out for people who are dissatisfied. So in this case, anytime somebody answered the question, what could we have done better? We can actually just show all those answers right here very easily so that if you're trying to do a better job of understanding, you know, what, what could we be doing better as an organization? What are the customers telling us in these surveys? You can easily show this information uh, and very easily understand um, you know, how we could maybe correct course. So those are several different ways that we could use. That's, a, I guess, a one simple way that we could use Eureka uh, to collect customer satisfaction information on a publicly facing form that connects back to contact record in Salesforce um, and very easily be able to collect that information from your customers. So uh, for, with that said, I'm gonna sign off. Feel free to shoot me e an email if you have questions um, or comments around this video. If you want to talk specifically about your use case, feel free to reach out to us or visit us at eureka.io to learn more. Uh, and certainly feel free to go to the App Exchange and find us there where you can install Eureka into your Salesforce environment. Give it a trial uh, and let us know what you think. Thanks, everybody.